Hello, sixth grade. All right, so today we'll be talking about integers and graphing. Integers, they are positive whole numbers, their opposites and zero. Okay, so positive whole numbers. Whole numbers are numbers such as one, two, three, four, not halves, okay, not three fourths, but whole numbers, okay? One, two, three, four, five, and so on. They're opposites. On a number line, we have positive numbers and we have negative numbers. Every number has an opposite. So one, and then the opposite of one would be negative one. The opposite of two would be negative two. The opposite of three will be negative three. Okay? And zero. Then we have negative integers. That is data or numbers less than zero. And it is written with a negative sign. Okay, so data or numbers less than zero. So any number less than zero, we will represent that as a negative number. Okay? So if I owe someone $5, that will be represented by negative five. Okay? Because I owe them money and it's written with a negative sign. And I'll put that more into context later. Okay. Then we have positive integers. That is data or numbers that are greater than zero, okay? So data or numbers that are greater than zero. So if I now have $5, then that will represent it as a positive integer, okay? So it'd be positive five. But when we write positive five, we don't write a positive sign, a plus sign, and five. We just write the number five, okay? So please pause the video, copy down your notes, and then press play when you are ready to move on. Okay, now we have three examples on the board. We want to represent each situation as an integer. Okay, so example number one, a 10 yard loss. So how would we represent a 10 yard loss? We would represent it as negative 10. Why? Because it is a 10 yard loss. Loss is our key word, okay? So a loss would be a deficit, a decrease. So therefore, we will represent it as a negative, okay? Example number two, four inches of rain above normal. So how would we represent four inches of rain above normal as an integer? We will represent it as positive four. And remember what I told you when we were going over the vocabulary words. When we represent a positive integer, we do not put a positive in front of it, no. We only represent it as a four, okay? And our key word, how do we know it is positive? Here, because they said four inches of rain above going up, normal. So therefore, it will be represented as a positive and example number three, a $48 deposit into a savings account. Okay, so how would we represent 48, a $48 deposit into a savings account? First, we need to know the meaning of deposit. Deposit means that we're putting money into the bank, into our savings account, so that way we have money, okay? So now if we have $48, so therefore it would be a positive 48, okay? Because withdrawal would mean that we're taking money out. We no longer have the money. But we made a deposit, meaning that we put the money back into the account. So now we have money to spend, okay? So please pause the video take down your notes, and then press play when you are ready to move on. 
Okay, so now we have talked about the integers. Now we're going to talk about the graphing. So integers can be graphed on a horizontal, that means side going from left to right, side to side, or a vertical, straight up and down, number line. So example number one, graph negative seven on a number line. Also, if you need to pause the video, please do so to take all this down, okay? And that way you can press play to move forward. Okay, so example number one, graph negative seven on a number line. So here we have a horizontal number line and here we have a vertical number line, okay? On a horizontal number line, graph negative, negative seven on a number line. The first thing that we need to do is find zero. Then we need to count going to the left because those are where your negative numbers are. They are to the left of zero on a number line, on a horizontal number line. So negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, and negative seven. And we are gonna put a dot on the number line, not above the number line, not below the number line. Don't do that. You put it on the number line, okay? Just like you put a piece of paper on a desk, not above the desk, not below the desk. You put it on the desk. You put this dot on the number line, okay? All right, so now we have graph negative seven on a horizontal number line. Now let's go ahead and graph it on a vertical number line. When you are looking at a vertical number line, it goes straight up and down, okay? Think of, now here is zero right here. So always think of zero as water level. So this is water. Anything above zero or above water are positive numbers. Anything below zero or below the number, the water line will be negative numbers, okay? So here is zero, negative numbers are below zero. Positive numbers are above zero. So when we talk about graphing negative seven on a vertical number line, we find zero, we count below zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, and we put our dot again on the number line, not beside the number line, okay? We put it on the number line, okay? Very important. And remember, I see this mistake a lot in my students on the number line. They want to count backwards, okay? That is not the way you count. When you are making a number line, at the zero comes one, and then two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, okay? Same thing for negative numbers. At the zero, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, and then negative seven, okay? I see this a lot. They put here negative four, or they start counting backwards. Don't do that, okay? Just count. And when I bring it to their attention, they're like, why did I do that? So please pay attention to how you're making your number line, okay? So remember, please pause the video and take notes if you need to. Okay. Now we have example two. Graph the set of integers negative four, two, and negative one. All right, so same thing. All we need to do is just find our integers on the number line and put a dot on the number line. So, negative four. So we have to find negative four. Here's our zero, 
We find negative four, negative one, negative two, negative three, and here's negative four. And we put a dot right there. Next is two. We find two on the number line. So here's our zero. We're going this way, one, two. And we put a dot on two on the number line. Next is negative one. Okay, so here's zero and here's negative one. And we just put a dot on negative one on the number line. Okay, and that's it. Very simple, okay? Please pause the video and take down any notes if you need to. Okay, so now we have example number three. <clears throat> Graph the set of integers zero, two, and negative three. And now we have a number line that is vertical, going straight up and down. Remember what I told you about a vertical number line. Picture zero as your water, water line, okay? Anything below the water line are negative numbers. Anything above the water line are positive numbers. So remember, zero is your water line, okay? So we were asked to graph the set of integers zero, two, and negative three. So the first thing we need to do is find zero. Found it right here. And remember, we put our dot on the number line. Now we'll be finding two. So here's zero, and we go up to two. And we'll put a little dot at two. And now negative three. So we go to zero, and now we go have to go down to negative three. And we put our dot there. And now we have graphed the set of integers zero, two, and negative three. Please pause the video and take notes. And if you have any questions, please contact me on Edmodo or you can leave a comment in the comment section, okay?